Hello, everyone. My name is Yasemin Dönmez Özkan. Uh, today, I will be presenting our literature review on mode awareness interfaces in automated vehicles, robotics, and aviation. This is our joint work with Alexander Mirning, Alexander Mesher Yakov, Can Su Demir, and Manfred Çelik. So, to start with, what is mode awareness? We can define mode awareness as users being aware of existence of different levels of automation, knowing the capabilities of these different levels and also knowing their responsibilities and their tasks during this mode. Well, uh, this starts to get a bit confusing when there are more than one mode, like in this example here. So why did we want to focus on mode, mode awareness? Because with, when the confusion with who is doing what starts, then it tends to lead to safety critical situation. We saw several examples in the recent incidents with automated driving. Also, having a clear understanding of current mode and good mode interface could also contribute to handover and takeover requests during automated driving. So before starting to develop or design new things, we wanted to look at the, uh, what is out there that still needs improvement, what are the good applications of mode awareness, and also what are the techniques and methods that are used to support mode awareness. We extended our search to human-robot interaction and aviation, where mode confusion issues are also experienced. So our search criteria, we only included academic publications. We focused on these three domains, automated driving, human-robot interaction, and aviation. We had certain search terms for each of the domain, uh, but I will not give details about this now. Uh, if you're interested in all the details, you can find it in our paper. And let's move on to the method. We looked at, the, as I said before, interface approaches, techniques, methods, and gaps, and our screening stages. Overall, we had two screening stages and one analysis. At this first screening stage, two researchers worked separately, looking at the titles, abstracts, and keywords. And this was followed by a discussion. And overall, they had one list of papers. For the second screening, again, two researchers looked at the introductions, results, conclusions, and the setup. And they also had the discussion afterwards and came up with one list of publications. And at the end, analysis was conducted by one researcher. And it was verified by a second researcher. This included full reading of all the papers. So at the end, we had 42 papers from automated driving, 16 papers from human-robot interaction, and 45 uh, papers from aviation. So um, overall, from these um, results, we had several subsections. But um, again, I will not go into detail of all these sections. But I want to take you now to the discussion points, which we found um, really interesting things from the literature review. Um, overall, we had three main discussion points. The first one is simple versus complex, mono versus multimodal. So across all the three domains, we saw that these um, mode awareness indi uh, indicators have some sort of on and off button kind of interface showing whether the automation is active or passive. Well, because this worked for a long period of some time, and before that, uh, automation was simple and with limited capabilities. This was fine. But when we look at the current uh, automation levels, which are really improved with advanced functionalities, these indicators are no longer sufficient to communicate the full spectrum of automation. Also, this was mentioned in several papers in the literature review, that these indicators fail to show the full spectrum. Uh, on the other hand, when we look at the in, uh, indicators placed on complex information screens, these could also easily cause cognitive overload. And in automated driving domain, which people are actively uh, working on developing multimodal interfaces, this also seems to fail because these interfaces are either uh, poorly received or causing overload of information for the driver. Uh, another interesting point we found is prediction. So do you think prediction could eliminate the need for indicators? 
Well, this may sound like the best strategy, um, which includes having a great prediction so that we don't need any indicators or less need over indicator. Um, this may still cause conflicts with the user, which requires a lot of verification from the user actually. Also, prediction has three dimensions. These are prediction of the environment, prediction of the user and prediction of the system. So uh, this could be extremely content dependent and this approach could be only suitable for controllable or limited type of environment. As when we look at the um, complex real life mixed traffic situations, this may not be the best solution. However, um, this could be a still promising direction to support simple indicators to keep the balance of complexity. Lastly, a need for more tools and long-term natural studies. So our literature review actually showed that um, there is no direct way to measure one's awareness. We saw the usually combination of subjective and objective measurement methods. And for subjective methods, questionnaires designed for situation awareness and mental workload are commonly used combined with eye tracking studies. Well, workload could give us some sort of information for mode awareness, but still it would be beneficial to work on developing new tools that target specifically on mode awareness, but not only focus on, on whether the user knows if there's an automation or not, but focusing on the understanding of the mode and its capabilities, as well as users' responsibilities in these modes. This review also showed us the lack of long-term natural studies in the field. Well, this makes sense to see that we only saw short-term studies, but we still think that it is necessary to see how the automation works over time and how the understanding of mode awareness changes over time. So these were the three main discussion points we had from the literature review. And if you have any further questions, we are happy to answer them now. Thank you so much for listening.